we often tell these stories, um, these Easter stories, as though it's like sunny and bright and Easter is here. And we forget kind of what led up to that. And when it was evening on that day, first day of the week and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the religious authorities. Jesus arrived and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And he showed them his hands and his, and his side. And, and the disciples rejoiced when, when, when they saw the Lord. He said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive. Holy Spirit, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve, wasn't with the others when Jesus appeared. So the disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. Thomas said, No. No, no. Unless I see the mark of the nail. No, unless I put my finger in the mark of the nail and my hand in his side, I, I won't. I can't believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus appeared and said, peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, put your, put your finger here, reach out your hand, Put it in my side. Don't, don't doubt. Believe. And Thomas. Thomas said, Oh, my Lord. Oh, my God. And Jesus said, are those who haven't seen and yet have come to believe. I'm really into tapping into some of the darker pieces of our biblical stories, especially when we often don't get them or we get them, but they're all told in such a way that everything's fine. So uh, this story for me is threefold. I think there's a lot around the language. So I don't say Jews, I say religious authorities. Um, fear of the Jews is a very problematic statement, especially in today's time and place, especially given the track record of Christians and violence against Jews in times like the Middle Ages during Holy Week. This is a very powerful story, and I think we have to give it that kind of care and attention to bring out that power. Um, the second thing is that I find Thomas to be a sympathetic character. Many of us who preach talk about how doubting Thomas is a bad rap, but really we are able to tell it that way. Thomas needs proof, and I get it. Thomas also wasn't there in the house. 
what was he doing outside? It's probably more dangerous outside than in the house. Was he connecting with other people in the movement? Was he providing other safe houses, safe lodgings? There's a shroud over a lot of what's happening in this story, and I think it needs to be told that way. There was a, a, a big piece around Thomas actually coming and touching Jesus, which changes everything when it gets to my Lord and my God. I heard another storyteller and watched another storyteller tell it that way M many years back at a festival gathering, and that always stuck with me. So I have that happen. Not only does Jesus touch his side, which I think is still hurting, but he invites Thomas to touch his side. And we're not told that Thomas doesn't do it. And finally, just as a, as a note as a filmmaker, um, I really wanted this to have a sense of nighttime and maybe one specific light coming up here, but really kind of harsh shadows. Again, because we normally don't tell this story or hear this story, under cover of darkness, or what it must have been like for the first disciples, where they were living in dangerous places, their safety was not guaranteed. I think we need to tell the story that way. It's really a, it's a deeply stirring kind of story for me. The beginnings of the Jesus movement happening in such a random room under cover of darkness, people escaping from the authorities, trying to survive. And that's where God meets us.